what I'm going to talk about today, power and authority in the name of Jesus. Power and authority in Jesus' name. And that's what's happening throughout the world as they proclaim the gospel. People are getting saved, set free, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and walking with God and then sharing it with somebody else. Isn't that great? I mean, it's... Uh, I, I, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much for bringing all that information to us. I really appreciate it. Well, as we're preparing to um, look at a brand new series, um, we're done with the fear or not, but I want to tell you, fear not. 2 Timothy 1.7, fear not. Why? Because God has given you power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? That's for each and every one of us. And so throughout this entire year, fear not. Why? God is in control in control of everything, every facet of our life, everything that's going on, he is in control. So that's why we gotta trust him and believe in him, amen? amen. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now too uh, for this time of looking at the scriptures. A lot of scriptures today, Father, but I would pray that the word of God does not fall to the ground, but accomplishes the purpose for which you and you alone send it today. As we read the word, May it penetrate our very spirit, soul, and our mind. As we just think about, Father, all the wonderful things you do, all the power that is in Jesus' name, lives being changed and transformed daily. And Father, thank you for the power of prayer. Thank you for the power of prayer. We can pray for salvation, healing, and miracles. We're grateful and thankful. And I thank you for this day because, again, today is the day that you have made. We're going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it all day long. And so, Father, I ask your anointing and blessing on this word. May you be glorified. May you be lifted up. May Jesus Christ be lifted up. And Holy Spirit, thank you for being our counselor, our comforter, and our guide. Thank you. And I ask your blessing on this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9, as we start our study this morning. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Gave him the name that is above every name. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. It's happening now as we hear the reports. The word goes out, they bow to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So I thought about a name. What's, what's so important about a name? As we speak a name, it identifies who we are, doesn't it? Kind of talks about our reputation, if you will. Hopefully it's all good. Uh, our position in life. But you know, we speak somebody's name and then the first thing is, if you're, if, if you think about it, they just, the picture of them pops into your brain. And then you have all these different thoughts about that individual. It could be anybody. Uh, I, I could name names here and as I do, then you think about them and you pray for them. So our names are very important. Although we have a, a bunch of Williams, um, how many Williams do we have in here? Am I the only William? Oh, Bill, you're back there. You know, we are conquerors, you know that. <laughs> William means conqueror. Huh? Sweet Williams, sweet Williams? what'd you say? Sweet I'm a sweet William, ask my wife. Ask her, just don't ask her now, ask her after church. I mean, come on. How is Bill? Is he a nice guy? No. Well, anyway, let's get on with the study here. Enough of, enough of that. <laughs> Bro. Huh? I know, I'm, I'm kidding, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Proverbs 22, one. let's move on. Are you with me now? Let's, let's just advance forward. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Isn't that something? Just your name. And we have the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we speak it, all power and authority in all heaven and earth, as we speak the name of Jesus. And oftentimes, as we're going to find, I'm going to do a, I'm looking way in advance, but right now the attack on Christianity and the attack on the name of Jesus. You try to say his name publicly, and you can't. They'll censor you. They'll do something if you do it publicly, even right now. 
But I want to tell you, there's power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's power. He's God in human form, and every knee will bow to him, and every tongue will confess that he is Lord of all heaven and earth. So let's jump into our study. So Roman numeral number one, if you're with me now, there is salvation in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. She will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. He will save people from their sins if they'll come and confess them. If they'll ask forgiveness, he's there to forgive them. So number one in your notes, we have been rescued from sin and eternal death. Now think about that. Rescued from sin and eternal death and brought into safety and eternal life through Jesus Christ. And I think, uh, boy, I don't know about you, but it's so good to be forgiven of all my sins. Um, I think about this and I don't think about it very often because I don't like what I used to be. So I don't like digging into my past. I, I, don't, I, I don't like going backwards. I want to keep going forwards. And all I think about is, Lord, thank you for forgiving me of all those sins, all my... And the other thing, probably not you, but stupidity. I mean, dumb stuff. And we're forgiven. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? We are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thought, wow. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. One name, Jesus Christ. He's our Savior. He's our Lord, our Redeemer. And it's so good because number two, Jesus brings deliverance and wholeness to us. Isn't that good? Deliverance and wholeness. Being complete, being whole. And I, I think, wow, He's delivered us. I'm safe. I'm sound. I'm whole by the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that cool? By the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thought, okay, Colossians 1.13. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, to whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Boy. I thought about that. You look at this, and God has taken us from the dominion of darkness, and he's transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, into what? The kingdom of light. The kingdom of light. Isn't that nice? To, have you ever tried to walk in the dark? It's not much fun. I mean, even at night, I like to have night lights in the hallway. Uh, I like to have the curtains bent slightly so I can kind of have a little bit of light coming in. Because you get up and the worst thing you can do is not be able to see, right? And so just think about that just for a moment. We've been delivered from darkness, our inability to see correctly. Are you with me? Our inability. And Jesus Christ comes and says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you into the kingdom of God and I'm going to bring you into the kingdom of light so that your path of life is illuminated. Every step you take, you can see where you're going. God will guide and direct and lead us every step of the way. Isn't that cool? Every step of the way. Wow. We have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Again, he's delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his dear son. And the second thing, Ephesians 2.10, this is very important too. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. The wholeness is God has created you and I. We are his workmanship. He created us for a particular task in life, each one of us, to do good works. Well, what good works are we supposed to do? I don't know what you're supposed to do. And I don't even know what I'm supposed to do tomorrow. I just want to do good works today. Right? Lord, what do you want me to do? Stay home. Okay. Don't leave the house. All right. How can I do good works? Just be quiet.
Think about that. Just be quiet. Be still. And know that I am God. That's the good work I want you to do today. And I'm going to tell you something. That's hard to do. It's hard just to shut up. I'm serious and be quiet. But we are his workmanship. Wow. Roman numeral number two. We are baptized in Jesus' name. Acts 2.38. Peter replied, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So important that people are baptized by full immersion. People debate it, discuss it, sprinkling, whatever. I think you need to be dunked. I think you need to be dead and buried and then raised from the dead. And that's what water baptism is all about. That's what full immersion is all about. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, Hi Halsey and Karen, who sit right behind you, you three right there, right, the couple behind you. Hi, he came up, I think it was two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and he said, Bill, 47 years ago today I was baptized, and they had to break the ice to get me into the water because it was during the winter. I'm serious, I was sitting right over here, it was after church, I was standing right there, he comes up, I just wanted to have 47 years ago I was baptized to this day. Isn't that something? And he wanted to be obedient, and they had to crack the ice so he could be baptized by full immersion. I've told you this story before. Another guy, I'm not going to mention his name, but I could mention him, but he wouldn't care. I baptized him, and we were, uh, what was, I can't remember that little, that little lake, a little tiny lake. He just got saved, and he wanted to get baptized. So we went out. I was living in the White Center, beautiful place, White Center. Oh, yo, yo. Anyway, so we walk out. I mean, it's freezing cold. And I thought, would somebody else do this, please? Yeah. Not me, but I had to then, I had to break the ice. So Gary and I, well, yeah, his name's Gary. We could walk out. And I'm serious. It was incredible. We walked out and I thought, Boy, this is crazy, man. I broke enough ice where I could baptize him and lay him into the water. I laid him into the water, I slipped on the ice, I fell in the water, and he starts coasting underneath the ice. He's going like this, I went, whoa! I see his nose hitting the ice. There's no joke, I grabbed his foot and pulled him out. He was a happy guy. Why? He was definitely dead and buried and raised into a newness of life. Those are true stories. That's, that, that's absolutely true. And Romans chapter 1 and verse 6 says, uh, or 6, 1, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his what? His death. Into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. What's that last part say? We can live a new life. Brand new life. Totally transformed. What's important is the old life is dead and buried. Never to be remembered. All the mess ups, gone wiped away, and we're raised into what? A newness of life, a new beginning, a new start. All as we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and obey him, right? I think it's wonderful. Roman numeral number three, there is healing in Jesus' name. 
Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put in every day to beg from those who were going into the temple, into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave his full attention, if you will, to them, expecting to get something from them. Peter says, silver and gold, I don't have. I don't have the money. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Wow. Now, what do I have? Yeah. Peter and John knew one thing. They had power and authority in Jesus' name. Not in themselves. They didn't have the money. They didn't have the wherewithal. They knew that they had power in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. What did he do? Took him by the right hand. He helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Isn't that wonderful? Instantaneous. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And, and I thought, wow, I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see more of that. I just want to say, too, expect miracles, would you? Expect the supernatural. Why? Because God's in control, not you or I. If you can speak the name of Jesus and believe it, miracles will happen. Things will take place. Now, there are three important things that we need to learn from this text, if you will. Number one, he was crippled or lame. Okay, number one. Number two, it's very important here, too, he is placed outside the temple, not inside. He's on the outside. And number three, he was poor and needy. Okay? And I think about, <laughs> I think about your, you and I, ourselves, and... So I wrote down three other things for you and I to look at. Number one, all of us are born unable to walk and please God. Kind of born that way. Pleasing God from the day we wake up. I mean, I, I'm praying for my grandkids right now. I'm sure you're praying for yours. And I'm just praying that they get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and walk with Jesus Christ all the days of their life. And I always add, walk with Him. Walk with Him. Why? Because right now, spiritually, until they're saved, they're not really able to walk with him, are they? So we pray for their salvation. That's what we want to do for everybody that needs to know Jesus Christ, that they can walk with him. Number two, and all of us at one time were separated from God and were outside of his presence and his perfect will. At one time, all of us were separated and needed to know Jesus Christ. And number three, we're all spiritually bankrupt before God, unable to pay the debt of our own sins. Can't do it. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ, only by the work of the cross, is all that possible. And that's why Jesus came to heal us and set us free. So we can walk, number one, in spirit and truth. Walk before God in spirit and truth. And we can be in the presence of God with him, not on the outside looking in, but inside and having constant fellowship with him. We're not outside anymore. We're on the inside. Isn't that good? And we can have a spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A spiritual relationship that's rich in him. That was a good news, I think. All because of the power and authority in Jesus' name. Number four, there is a powerful deliverance in Jesus' name. This is an interesting story, Acts 16, 16. 
Once when we were going to the pal pal palace for a prayer, or place of prayer, pardon me, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. The girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. There's a couple of different translations that are kind of interesting uh, from the Greek, and that is teaching um, a way of salvation, not the way. It's in parentheses. So if you look at different, oh, 25 different uh, uh, translations, a lot of them will have a parentheses around her teaching a way of salvation, not the way. But either way we want to look at it right now, it's, it doesn't matter. Because she was following these guys and she was being actually a, a nuisance. So this girl followed Paul and told him that in verse 18. She kept this up for many days. And this, now this is interesting to me. Finally, Paul got so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, not to her. Notice what he does here. Paul turns around. And he says to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Now think about that just for a minute. How much nerve did that take for Paul to do that in public? I mean, there's tons of people around and here's this young lady, turns around to her and commands the spirit to come out of her. And immediately it came out, it withdrew. The moment that spirit left her, as soon as Paul said it, I command you to come out. That is incredible when you think about it. That girl was transformed in a split second. In a split second. And it's interesting because he doesn't say, I, Paul. He says, in the name of who? Jesus Christ. So the slave girl, she made her money by predicting the future. What's interesting about this they call it the spirit of divination. In another text, they call it the spirit of Apollos and Python. Okay? So it has two separate names. The spirit of Python and the spirit of Apollos. And the, kind of the, and it's important for you and I to know this too because this is a counterfeit to the word of God. It's a counterfeit to biblical prophecy when you have these spiritual predictions. And what's interesting about the spirit um, the spirit is a snake. It was a snake. The history shows us that this particular spirit of Python or Apollos was a snake. And so the story goes, um, the god Apollos, he went to Mount Pythias to go kill the snake so that he could have all the power to tell fortunes. Now, to me, what's important about this whole scenario of even today, um, uh, like I'm, I, I'm already, I'm going to do spiritual armor the next four or five weeks, but I'm already studying end times right now. Uh, I'm going to teach that also, end times, signs of the Lord's return. And one of the things I've been on, and forgive me here, I'm kind of wandering away, but is these false prophets, false teachers, thousands of them. Give, I think you go to Kirkland, or, wouldn't they have a, um, a hand reader that was in uh, Kenmore? Hand reader? Uh, there was another fortune teller. Uh, if you go up to uh, Lake City Way, I think on the left-hand side by a really cool barbecue restaurant, uh, there's a fortune teller. Just right now. I mean, you can go tomorrow or you'd probably go there today. And they're still doing it and people are still falling for it. Isn't that interesting? But I thought it was interesting, too, and you all know this, is that guess who deceived Eve? Snake. Came up. Deceived Adam and Eve, right? Made them lame. Interesting, isn't it? I'm just thinking, so forgive me. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. The people that fall for all that nonsense. Gosh. Reading tea leaves and all that garbage. It's all the spirit of divination. Deception. 
It's demonic. Instead of people going to Jesus Christ, they go to these people that are currently in Kirkland and Seattle and Lake Washington. I mean, they're all over the place. But we have Jesus Christ. Amen? All right, lastly, Roman numeral number five, there is power and authority in Jesus' name. Luke 9, 1. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It's kind of interesting, too. I'm going to just say this, that God may place in front of you sometime somebody that's really hurting and they actually tell you about it. And uh, don't be surprised if you don't say, may I pray for you and lay hands on you? Well, wait a minute, you're in Safeway. So what? You're at a restaurant. Maybe the waitress is hurting. And actually, it's interesting too, that as Christians, how many people will come up and just be an open book? You don't even have to know them. And they'll start telling you stuff. Start telling you things. And all you have to do is say, I'll pray for you. In fact, if you want me to right now, I'll lay hands on you right now. And they'll either say yes or no. Why? Because you and I as Christians have power and authority in Jesus' name. Every one of us. So to walk in power and authority, we're given four simple steps to take. One, faith. If you want to walk in that power and authority, it takes faith. Faith in the name of Jesus Christ. His supremacy, his sufficiency, his power. You have to have faith in all of that. Two is confidence in the blood of Jesus Christ. Confidence. So to see signs, wonders, and miracles happen in power in the name of Jesus Christ, it takes a lot of faith. It also takes confidence and courage courage to do what God tells you to do on any given moment and trust number four trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to break oppression and set the captives free and it's all Jesus Christ it's none of us it had nothing to do with you and I except are you willing to be a vessel for God to use that's what it's really all about are you just willing to be used by God? Because you get no credit. He gets all the credit. All of it. Amen? Yeah. Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do immensely more than we all ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within who? Us. In the last scripture, 1 John 4.4 4, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? You and I have power and authority in Jesus' name all because of the cross behind me. All because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, shedding his blood to set you and I free. I think that's pretty good news, don't you? Good news. And again, I'm going to ask you to just, um, throughout this week, pray for miracles. Yeah. Pray for people that you know, not only that they may get saved, but they may be delivered, set free, and supernaturally healed. Amen? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you for your word, your power of your word, the written word. Again, may not one word fall to the ground, but accomplish, Father, the purpose for which you send it out today. All these scriptures, but may they penetrate our very spirit, soul, and mind as we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, loving our neighbor as ourself and praying for them, their salvation, their healing. Again, Father, thank you that we have power and authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.